did some good things, and there's some things that um, you know we can get better at. There's some things that that I can do to um, to help us as well. So I, a lot of different things that went on tonight that I think we we can pay attention to all of them and work on them. Welcome back, Hawks fans. It's your boy Bryce Lewis back for another Atlanta Hawks wrap up show. Hawks losing tonight 119 to 116 to the Washington Wizards. Tough loss in uh, Quinn Snyder's first game as head coach of the Atlanta Hawks. And tonight was a game of learning. I mean, that's just as simple as I can put it to you for, for Quinn and, and the players. You know, it wasn't a game where the Hawks were just brutally outplayed or anything like that. It was a pretty le- evenly contested game, even in the stats. They both shot around the same field goal percentage. Hawks actually shot better from three, even though it felt like they missed a lot of looks in the first half. Field goal percentage around the same. I mean, feel free throws, turnovers eight to nine, assists 19 to 21. I mean, for the most part, the game was pretty even. It's just the Wizards made more plays late and the Hawks did it. The Wizards executed late and the Hawks did it. And that's just as simple as I can put it to you. They just executed. And, you know, I think this is something that is, is going to be a learning process, like I've mentioned multiple times for this team and what they want to do moving forward, et cetera, et cetera. So what I mean is, think about this. This is a process. This is a feeling out process that Quinn Snyder is going through with the team. He mentioned tonight in the press conference about I'm having to rely on Trey and Dejounte a lot. You know, he says I'm I'm trying to get as much information as I can from the guys. So and from what I'm seeing on the court, so then I know how to better coach it. It's not something he's just going to know day one. You know, he made a comment. I believe uh, I believe it was uh, Caleb Johnson from 92.9 Day Game. He made a he made a comment and was like, you know. He said that he made a comment about we maybe if we can't get past a defender, maybe we can, you know, back them in. Like, you know, can we post them up? And that's a question that he wouldn't have known before tonight. He obviously wants them to play fast. I feel like the Hawks did play with a little bit more pace tonight. But I think in late game execution, you saw it actually kind of be a bit of an issue because Trey was just shooting to the basket, getting blocked. If we can sit here and say Trey wasn't, you know, making the best decisions, but he was playing fast, because usually the complainer of the Nate was we played too slow, but he played fast, got blocked, and, you know, we had empty possessions, and the Wizards, Bradley Bill 101 against DeJounte Murray, or whoever they put on him, and we said make plays. And, and, and I'm going to say this too about DeJounte, and this isn't even a bad thing with DeJounte, this is just the truth. DeJounte is a good defender, he's a good point, point of attack defender, but he's not like a girthy guy, he's not a strong, big wing. You know, he's a bigger guy, but he's not like Bradley Bill's strength and Bradley Bill height and Bradley Bill stuff. That's why Bradley Bill won that matchup a lot in the fourth quarter. We realistically should have put DeAndre Hunter on him because that's why DeAndre finishes games. He's the guy where you go against their best offensive player and you take them one on one, whether that's Kuzma or whether that's Bradley Bill. And, you know, that's something that Quinn has to look at and think, okay. How do we better handle that situation? Should we have given more him more help to try to get it out of his hands? Should like we you know I feel like the Hawks have played more one-on-one defense the last few games coming out of the All-Star break. And that's burned him a couple of times because you know, guys, they're going against really talented guys. Like last game, Miles Bridges, you know, he was he was doing it, especially then when he was making plays one-on-one defense against guys. Because that's what one-on-one defense can tell. You may get beat on, on certain possessions. And I think that's what happened tonight. But but going back to Quinn. You know, he's, he's still learning his team. He's still learning how to best coach them. He's learning how to best, like, you know, like, if we're in this situation, how do I counter if we can't do something? How do we adjust if this is something? What is my personnel? Are we able to execute this? Those are the things he won't know right now. He's having to learn through the players. He's having to learn through tape. He's having to learn through coaching. He can't coach the issues with certain things or certain situational uh, situations until he actually is like he was on the tonight on the sideline coaching. And he, like I said, he was very honest about that after the game. He's like, I'm I'm still trying to figure things out, and that's why I said it'll be hard a little bit as a fan to be patient because the Hawks are in a very crucial stretch where you're playing a lot of teams right now who are trying to make the postseason just like you, who are trying to get up into the play-in, just like you, trying to get a higher seed, just like you. You're playing the Heat twice. You play Wizards twice again next week. You got Portland. 
You, you know, you, you played Boston, I believe, in almost a week and a half. Two weeks. Like, you got some tough teams that you're playing. The Hawks have one of the toughest schedules in the year. And you're also trying to learn each other as players learn the coach, coach, coach learns players. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. Old habits won't die because a new guy comes in there. I know some people will say Quinn comes in. Ooh, we're now we're going to not have any issues. We're not going to have any problems. And now we're going to be able to do things. And that's, that's not going to be the case. Quinn has to see what's happening, get feedback, talk to coaches, and then he'll figure out how can we handle this situation? What's the best way? You don't think Quinn knows that situational basketball has been an issue for this team? He can't fix it just in one night. He has to see it with his own eyes, also with Kate that he's been watching, and then be like, okay, how can I coach them? How can I direct Trey? How can I direct DeJounte? How can I direct DeAndre? How can I direct these guys so we can get the best quality possessions that we can in those possess in, the, in that type of uh, situation late in games? Those are the things that's going to take time, and that's why I say they're going through a filling out process. That's going to be tough for some fans to hear because you're going to be like, oh, he's supposed to be this great coach. Why can't he figure it out like that? It's just not how things work. we got to let the process work. But hopefully, I don't think the Hawks are a bad team where they're going to get blown out the, the building by teams. They're going to be in these games. And so we'll see, you know, how his coaching, how his communication with the players goes and if they execute it. You may see more changes over time with this team. Because listen, you implement new things. It's not going to be like, boom, day one, you're fine. He didn't have a training camp to implement these things. He's having to implement them each game of every for the rest of the season and figure out from there, what do I have in my guys? So I, I, I don't look at this loss tonight and I don't view this as like, a, oh my God, we're the same old Hawks. Like, I don't view it like that. I'm just like, listen, I, I understand what's happening. He doesn't have his own staff. He's, 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 he's everything he's using is not his we won't know his true vision for what he wants for this team what he wants on his staff and everything like that till the offseason and we see the changes he makes. right now he's working with what's there and then he's executing with what's there so listen they're saying they want to go on a bit of a run to end the year so we'll see if they're going to be able to pull that off but you know Wizards are a team like I said they're fighting to try to make the play in you know they're, they're they they needed that win tonight they're hungry the Hawks are going to be playing hungry teams trying to win games. The Hawks got to be as hungry. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens, man. But like I said, it's a tough loss tonight, but it's a, it's, it's a learning experience. Every game will be a learning experience from this point on for the rest of the season. And we just got to see how things go, man. So, you know, I, I, I say don't get your head down. Let's, let's, you know, let's see what happens. They, they play Portland next. Again, team fighting. They're fighting. They're hungry. David Lillard is coming off 71. I mean, I, you know. He, he's playing great. Cam Reddish return, you know, Cam Reddish, like, you know, we're going to play him again. Like, we'll have to see how things go, man. We really have to see how things go. So, you know, it's going to be a process, guys. As they say in Philadelphia, trust the process. And that's how we have to be right now, Atlanta. And believe Snyder is going to be able to figure some things out. He'll be able to coach these guys up and they'll be able to make some things happen as they make a playoff push. Uh, at the end of the season, the last 2019 games. But that's all I got for you guys. Just want to give you my thoughts on that. Like I said, tough L tonight. Trey had 31, but, you know, we needed a little bit more for some guys. We need some shots. Hawks missed a lot of shots, like I said, late in the game. But that's just kind of how things go. But we'll figure it out. It's your boy, Bryce Lewis. I'll see you next time.